welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. Today I'm going to be covering a topic that is near and dear to my heart. It is multiple sclerosis and this is a neurodegenerative or neurological condition and it is one that I feel that is very important because the population that is impacted by MS is very broad as you can get this condition as early as 20 or you may be diagnosed when you're 50. So it's a very broad population and it also has no known cause. And let's break down the word first because that's always an easy way to remember what it means. So multiple we know would mean many and sclerosis would come from the word for scars. So it breaks down into multiple scars. And why this is important is because your body is attacking your myelin sheath. And if you guys remember from anatomy, um, your myelin sheath is what covers the neurons in your brain. And so this is going to impact all of your central nervous system, which is going to include your brain and your spinal cord. And so it's a process of progression that is demyelinating or your myelin sheath and that demyelination is going to cause scarring sometimes it's referred to as plaques so that sclerosis is going to impact all of those little axon potentials that we have going out where it's signaling from our nervous system out to our body the impulses so sometimes those can be delayed sometimes they can be interrupted and based on where those scars and plaques take place in your brain the location is specific to what kind of symptoms the individual with ms is going to have so everyone's ms is going to look very different and some people might have difficulties with motor planning other others might have difficulty with sensory integration such as uh, pain or sensation changes and it all just depends on where these plaques are in our brain MS is also a chronic and progressive condition, so this is a lifelong condition that people need to live with, and that gives you an idea of what our role as OTs is going to look like for these individuals. And as I said earlier, there is no known cause, and we know that women are more impacted. So what I'm going to do is talk about some symptoms, and this definitely doesn't cover everything because MS symptoms can really range. So... These are some very common ones that I hear about, and this includes fatigue, dizziness, which also sometimes impacts balance, as well as intention tremors, and impaired sensation or pain, as well as difficulties with memory. So short-term memory loss is common, and that can also be really difficult for your attention span, so decreased attention. And also just with like our bodily needs, so this is very like interoception based so like our incontinence sexual symptoms maybe that could be um for men it could be erectile dysfunction um or for women it could be lower libido and also decreased executive functioning skills and you can see this in speech as well as cognition so speech could be slurred speech could be delayed you might have a hard time retrieving words and I think the cognitive piece really ties in with your ability to plan and use that frontal lobe. So that really ties in with that short-term memory, in my opinion, because when you're trying to organize and sequence the things that you need to do during the day, but you keep forgetting, then that's all tied together. So because there is no known cause for this and the scarring is progressive there really is no treatment for ms there's no cure of course there are medications that can support specific symptoms that a person may be undergoing but because it's a chronic condition and what i would call an invisible condition that comes with phases of exacerbation as well as remission phases the treatment is really based on getting preventative therapy and taking care of your lifestyle. So OTs can do so much for the MS population. We can focus on 
ADL retraining. So if they have certain barriers or needs during their daily activities, we're retraining them on how this can be done a different way to make it easier for them. This also involves energy conservation, especially because they have such strong symptoms with fatiguing and dizziness, as well as adaptive equipment. And a big thing that uh, I used when I worked with um, an MS, MS patient was like a diary or like a tracking system. So what you want to do is really help them understand what their lifestyle looks like currently, what their day-to-day schedule is like, and help them prioritize what's important to them to get done. And also it helps them to sort of track when their pain starts or what causes what, and that will help them monitor certain symptoms and ways to counteract that. In addition to all of this, I think that having an invisible condition is extremely stressful. And when I say invisible, I think about all the people who have very clear physical disability. When you see someone in a wheelchair, you automatically see that there is a physical disability and it is very clear. But when you have an invisible condition, a person with MS who is in a remission phase may appear to be highly functional and not have any outward signs of pain or discomfort. They may be talking, walking, eating, doing everything well, and you would never know that they have a chronic condition. So because there are so many ups and downs that MS comes with, um, I think support groups are very important as well as lifestyle changes to be stress-free and healthy. So dietary changes as well as exercising routinely. Aquatic therapy is a really fun one and very common for the MS population because it's kind of light on the joints, but you get nice aerobic exercise. So things like that are very important in establishing a routine that's healthy for the MS population. So I wanted to break down the four types of multiple sclerosis because there are four kinds and as you can see, I drew little graphs next to them and they have very similar names. I found this to be probably the hardest for me to remember when I was studying MS. So I wanted to review it and hopefully help you guys work through this information. So for relapsing remitting that is the most common out of the four types of ms and i want to break down the words to really simplify exactly what this would mean if you have relapsing and remitting in the word that means you're going through both you relapse which means that you have an exacerbation your symptoms increase and then it's followed by recovery or remission over time so when we look at this little diagram you see you kind of have like an upward stroke of relapse and then you kind of go back down into a slow regression, recover for a little bit and then you have another relapse and so on and so forth. So that's the most common one. And the second one is called primary progressive. So primary progressive is when you are progressively worsening from the start. There is no relapse or remission. As you can see in the picture, this is a straight uphill diagonal line. So if you do have any remission, it's very minor. Most of this is just a progressive uphill battle. So primary, progressive, when I think primary, I think of first or in the beginning. So from the start, you have just progression of worsening unfortunately. So that's why the slope looks like that. Whereas there is secondary progressive. Secondary progressive is when you are steadily worsening. So in this picture you can see that there's a little bit of an up, down, up, down, but overall the slope is very angled up. 50% of relapse remitting MS ends up turning into secondary progressive MS within the first 10 years. So those are two that you kind of want to keep together. Uh, I think a nice way to remember that is I think of primary progressive kind of on its own primary as it starts that way and it just progresses. And then relapsing remitting is like the most common one. So let's say most people with MS have that. Then eventually second or secondary is going to be the secondary progressive that kicks in within the first 10 years for 50% of relapsing remitting MS. 
and this is just that steady worsening but it has the relapses and the remissions in the pictures as you can see the fourth one is progressive relapsing. So this one has a clear worsening with attacks from the very beginning. And unfortunately, there are no remissions. As you can see, the picture between relapsing, remitting, and progressive relapsing look the most similar. But how you would distinguish these two is that progressive relapsing is at a much higher angle a slope that's going upward so the worsening of the attacks is very clear whereas relapse remitting has those clear remission phases and progressive relapsing does not so you are progressively relapsing consistently and getting worse so the MS patient that I had the privilege of working with was a grandmother and she really really prided herself in being involved in her grandchildren's life and she was not working but she also was very involved in her church and a lot of acts of service she was a very busy and active person and i think she always needed some time to figure out how to balance that out she had things that she wanted to prioritize but she also cared so much about so many things that she didn't really get everything done so for her, we focused on energy conservation a lot because that was probably one of the most challenging things for her. She would tell me that she was never able to finish vacuuming her home in one hit because it would be so tiring. So we would establish ways for her to break up the vacuuming so maybe she could do parts of the house on different days and other parts of the house on another day so that she doesn't have to do it all at once. So those are different strategies and even home modifications that you can assist patients with MS with. And it's very hands-on and I think you really get to know their life and what's important to them. And I think that's why it's important that we use the right theories and assessments when we're looking at the MS population. Of course, there are so many relevant theories, but I included the MOHO and the stages of change in here because I think those are just very relevant to the MS population. So MOHO, as many of you know, is a model of human occupation. And if you're not familiar with the theories and models, I have a video for that and I'll link it down below. But MOHO, um, everything's about how the occupation and the human, all those relationships and those connections, and that's so OT. And for the MS population, all of their occupations are impacted. So we really have to look at the person's lifestyle and their circumstances and what occupations are important to them in order to help them accomplish these things uh, in a safe and effective manner. Stages of change is the trans theoretical model. And I'm not going to go too far into this because I think it needs its own video. But basically, this is kind of working through the phases of change. And as you can see, there are six steps. There's pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, maintenance, and termination. So this is something very useful to use with a lot of different people that you work with and even for yourself if you're trying to orient yourself to to finish and complete a goal all of us are in a different phase in our life for different tasks and for ms it's very important to know where your patient is at are they ready to make change or are they still resisting change so if you are still in pre-contemplation you just feel like no matter what you do, nothing's going to change. So I'm not going to even try. But then as you work through these phases, you could end up at a point where you're on stage four, which is action, where you actually are changing a behavior. You really are making a change for your lifestyle to make it better. And the only thing I want to note here that's really important is that typically people end up staying at stage five, which is maintenance. And I think that's important to note because for a chronic and progressive condition, people with MS are going to always have to be maintaining. Another great assessment I want to plug here is the COPM. The COPM is a Canadian Occupational Performance Measure, and I really like this one because it's an evidence-based outcome measure, and it's really easy to use. You can just sit with your patient and kind of get an idea of what their self-perception on their life and what's important to them is. And 
you know, just things that they want to improve in in their performance or things that are the biggest barriers for them. It's short to use and you can use it as a reference where you can do a pre-test, post-test. That's a great one to use. So that covers everything for my MS video today. I hope this was helpful. So thank you so much for watching this video. I will catch you guys soon. Good luck.